Hallelujah. We thank God for your love. Give God praise, precious one. I am here this afternoon, a very good Sunday that I've just returned from church service. And I want to share with you with the word of God and some important things that I shared with the church today on, at the Sunday service. It is very important for me to let you understand that I've been teaching the book of First and Second Corinthians and I've been looking at it systematically and looking at issues that are relevant to the church. And when I look at the book, I see specific problems that were uh, relative to the Corinthian church, but the great Apostle Paul using universal principles in order to deal with these specific problems. And out of them, one of the things that we looked at is the nature of the church, and now we are beginning to look at the problems that were in the church and how the apostle approached them and sought to solve them. And when you look at chapter 1 from verse 10, you will find out that one of the concerns of the apostles has to be with the unity of the church, the church coming together as one body, accepting one another as the same members of the same body, even the body of Christ. Now, this is very important because from verse 10, he says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, I, 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 one of the aspects that I delve in mightily that I want to share with you is the causes of division. I spoke about causes of divisions in the house of God, cause of division in the church, cause of division in the body of Christ. Now, what are the causes of divisions in the body of Christ? Number one, the number one cause of division in the body of Christ is when the leaders, the preachers, the pastors, and the Bible teachers, when they lost their sense of purpose, and then they lost their sense of purpose and the purpose of their calling, that they don't protect the Messiah, their master that called them, but six to protect themselves, it will definitely bring division in a church. So a church that have pastors that don't stand on principles trying to protect Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel and directing people to Jesus, who is their savior and the savior of the world, but tries to protect themselves based upon personal eloquence, based upon personal performance, there will be a division. Number two, when certain doctrines are not taught well in their right context, doctrines that are not taught well, for example, baptism, ordinations, which are doctrines of the church, if they are not taught well to the understanding of the people, the people's faith are built around they that administer these doctrines rather than based upon Christ. But first of all, you must know that your assignment as a called person is to preach Christ, preach the gospel, preach about the cross, preach about the resurrection. And when men believe in it before you can administer baptism. So when we allow doctrines to take the first place, they that administer those doctrines to be of priority rather than projecting Christ that people will accept. Now, these doctrines are part of the church, but they must be taught for people to understand them better, that they will understand that all these doctrines are built and surrounding Christ. So we don't put emphasis on the doctrine rather than the person of Christ. So when emphasis is put on certain doctrines rather than the persons of Christ, division will set in in the body of Christ. Number three, division will set in when certain gifts are exalted above their originally intended purpose. Every spiritual gift that is given to the body of Christ has a purpose. It has a purpose for that gift. Then we give us different kinds of spiritual gifts and intend that they all work for one purpose, the edification of the church, the edification of the body, the body building up together. When the gift is exalted above its original intention, it will bring division. This was some of the problems that happened in Corinth that the Corinthian church was confronted with. People exalted prophecy. Some exalted tongue speaking. Some exalted interpretation of tongues. Some exalted oratory. And they think that these gifts were highly exalted than the other. So they thought if you prophesied, you were better than the one who speaks in tongues. If you speak in tongues, you're better than the one who prophesied. It brought about division. 
Number four, the fourth issue that brought about division is when the church members, when the members of the body of Christ cease from praying for their leaders, praying for the teachers, praying for the pastors, interceding on behalf of their brothers and sisters, to criticizing and condemning and discussing their leaders, then there will be division in the church. Because every leader has a following. And when you discuss and criticize a leader, his following will surround around him. And they that are in opposition will also group themselves somewhere and there will be a division in the church. Now, how does that weaken the church? Jesus Christ teaching about unity, teaching about division, at one of the sermons said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. It will not stand. And one of the longest prayers of our Lord Jesus Christ is recorded in John chapter 17. He prayed for three important factors. He prayed for his own glorification. Then he prayed for the apostles. Then he prayed for them that would believe him through the message of the apostles. And he prayed for two important things for the disciples and they that would believe him through the message of the apostles. First of all, he prayed that God would protect them from the evil one. Then he prayed that they may be one in unity. So he prayed for unity. You look at the early church and you find out that one of the significant things that they did very well was that they were very, very united. They were united. They were united. So Paul, hearing about the division in the church, decided to use the universal principle of unity to teach the people that they should be one in mind, one in thought, that together they will stand. Then I also spoke greatly about the importance of unity. Unity is the power that breaks the barrier of every impossibility. Unity is the power that breaks the barrier of every impossibility. And unity makes a group of people strong, it makes them mighty, makes them accomplish greater things. So in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 8, God himself testifying about the people, the tower, the Babel generation, they that rose up to rebuild a tower in Babel, God said, if they remain to be one language and one people and understand one another, if there's anything that they will imagine to do, nothing shall be impossible unto them. And on that note, I want you to understand that unity is the stool that breaks the barriers of impossibility. I don't know whatsoever challenge your ministry, your church, the body in your area, the church universe. I'm not talking about the denomination, but the church universe. We need to remain united. We need to remain focused, rallying behind one another, speaking one thing, loving one another, sharing fellowship with one another. And if we stay united, when unity prevails, the people will rise above impossibilities. And on that note, I pray for you that God will keep us united. God will keep you united in the body. And as we are united in the body, may the Lord exalt you above every impossibility. The Lord raise you beyond impossibility. Break every barrier of limitation. Cause you to experience the glory of God. But all this can only take place when you are part of the body. And until you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there is no way you can be part of the body and there is no way you can be united with believers where we will be rising beyond impossibilities. But I pray for you that you will give your life to Jesus and accept as your personal Lord and Savior. Become part of the body. Stay united. Stay strong. That together we will establish the kingdom of God on earth. That his will in heaven will be done on earth. That the gospel will reach out and touch other needs. Get connected. Stay united. Support one another. Love the brethren. And let brotherhood love continue in Jesus' most holy name.